Today, we're creating a super cool glitch effect. It's been a while since I worked on this project. So I thought, why not make a tutorial? A quick heads up, this effect might cause visual discomfort for some people. This project was a happy accident for my experiments. But I really love how it turned out. So, without further ado, let's dive in. Let's begin by adding a sphere SOP. Set its rows to 10 and columns to 300. Also, connect a null after the sphere SOP. Now, let's head over to the chop domain by using a SOP to chop. We will need a noise chop to introduce some randomness. We need three channels, so we will name them TX, TI, and TZ in the channel name section. Assign a different seed to this noise. And change its period to 0.77, you can copy the other parameters as follows. Harmonics to 2. Roughness to 0.619 And Amplitude to 1.15 Next, add another noise chop And enable its time slice Follow it with a math chop Set its pre-add value to 5.5. Rearrange this noise from 0 to 1, up to 0 to 0 0.1. Connect a null after this math chop. And reference its chan 1 to the exponent parameter of the first noise. This setup will randomize the exponent of the noise at each frame dynamically. Add a transform chop after this noise. and use the abs time expression in the rotation y parameter of this transform. Before moving back to SOPs, it's a good practice to add a null at the end. The structure may look messy, but that's a good sign, as it helps achieve a better glitch effect. Now, add a noise sop after the chop too, and set its exponent to zero. As always, finish this SOP work by adding a null at the end. Now, let's set up the render network. Add a geo comp, a camera comp, a render top, and a line MAT for the material. This render network will convert SOP data to tops allowing us to render and save the animation. Enable draw points in the line mats parameters. And set the line color to your preference. I'll use green. Change the point far color to pure white. Assign this material to the geometry. And select material. Adjust the camera position to 8.2 in the Z direction. Next, open the palette section on the left hand side. And grab the bloom comp. Change the blur size to 13.
I'll set the bloom color to dark green. We can also use the bloom top to add a glow effect to our strings. Set its threshold value to 0 0.0192. Again, go to the palette, under image filters, grab the color threshold. Choose your preferred color. And tweak the settings to your liking. I'll use a softness value of 0.212 and set the dry mix value to 0.922. To introduce a subtle blur effect, use a blur top and set its filter size to 1. Optionally, we can use a transform top to slightly scale the visual. Or you can adjust the camera's translate Z parameter. Add a level top to enhance the colors. Set its black level to 0.25. Now comes the key effect that creates the glitchy look. Start by adding a composite top. Followed by an RGB key to create a black background. Use the RGB delay comp from the palette. Complete this effect with a sharpen comp at the end. Now, this next part is a bit tricky. Use the output of the sharpen comp as the input for the composite top. Surprisingly, I discovered this effect through experimentation. As you can see, although the timeline is static, yet the effect remains dynamic. Connect a base comp after the sharpen to build a simple feedback loop. Start by connecting a feedback top. Followed by a level top. And a composite top. Use the outputs from the in top and level top as inputs for the composite top. Drag the composite top onto the feedback top and connect the composite to the, the out top. Now, let's set up a system to switch composite operations over time. Start with a constant chop. Set its value to 1. Add a speed chop. Speed will help this constant value to keep increasing over time. we will use a math and change its integer settings to round to get integer values. In the speed chops limit type, choose loop. Since composite operations are limited to 45, set its start to zero and end to 45. Reference this math chops channel one to the composite top. Alternately you can increase the math chops multiply value to adjust the frequency of switching. We can use a switch top to toggle between the feedback effect and raw glitch effect. Finalize this work with a null at the end. Now we can switch to the feedback effect to see how it looks. The effect evolves dynamically due to our setup, which switches the composite operations over time. Lastly, we may need a transform top to set the background color. 
as some composite operations could result in transparency. Now, tweak the parameters and experiment to see how different values influence the final output. And that's it. Let me know what you'd like to see next. See you in the next one.